LD on Countdown 1, go for launch. Well, 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 happy Friday to everybody. Hope you're going to have a great weekend. We've got some work to do on our end. So what are we doing? Well, we've done an initial boxing, unboxing, and opening with the Juice America J Plus Booster. We did the initial uh, get it plugged in onto the wall. You saw that one in the previous video. We had to drop another 240 in the garage. Can never have enough 240 outlets, so that was cool. And uh, the initial charge on the uh, Tesla, we actually got the full 40 amps out of it, which was fantastic, pulling nine kilowatts. Well, today what I wanted to do was go over the actual charger itself. Excuse me, EVSC. The charger is in your vehicle. This is a electric vehicle service equipment. If you want to get all technical, it's a charger. We call it a charger. Everybody knows it as a charger. It's a great charger, and I'm going to show you why. Hang on real quick. So a couple of things that I want to talk about with the Juice America J Plus Booster here and the attachments that you get this is very interesting this is also very cool to me we're not going to read all that don't worry this is ul rated underwriters laboratories here in the united states uh what this is is a it's a series of tests to my understanding that they put equipment through to verify that it can operate within a specified temperature within a specified voltage and amperage you don't need that to make these i have a couple that i don't use that are not ul approved this one is so juice america when they did their j plus booster twos they went above and beyond what is required speaking of what's above and required that little guy right there measures temperature in celsius there is a uh, two temperature sensor heads in here and what that's going to do is it's going to protect <laughs> everything from uh temperature spikes from amperage from voltage it's another safeguard so that you don't ruin the equipment that you don't ruin whatever your vehicle you're plugged into it's another wonderful safety aspect that juice america has gone through to make darn sure that their equipment is good to go and then you will find on all of the adapters that they're going to give you the minimum and maximum operating temperatures uh the amperage I mean, even down onto these little ones where it's focus. There we go. You're going to get all of the operating temperatures on here, the volts, everything. And that is a safety aspect that I think that anybody that produces these things should have. What that does is it gives you a quality equipment that you know has gone through some testing and you can actually feel safe about using it in your home. So in all fairness, I do have one from another company. I haven't used it in a long time, over a year actually. It is not UL approved and that thing gets exceptionally hot. I paid for it. Um, but there was always that, oh, you see the horror stories about, you know, cars catching fire while they're charging. Granted, that's a very rare circumstance that that happens. But just knowing that a company has gone above and beyond what is required uh, to do that is fantastic. And Juice America really, really went above when they put this together, when they field tested it to go through and get the approval ratings for it. And that right there speaks volumes to me. Normally I like to throw in like some humor and stuff in my videos, but this is actually quite serious. So if you get outside of operating temperatures and you get a voltage spike or something like that, there can be some, some real damage can happen. And uh, for these guys to go through that and uh, make sure that the equipment is going to function how it should under the most austere conditions, you have my allegiance, guys. I, I think that that's fantastic. So let's get back to what other goodies this thing. So you'll know that they all come with what you would assume to be dust caps, and they just kind of pop right off each of them. The EVSC has one. You got all your female and male ended pins in there. You got all your male and female ended well those are just female ended ones they're cool dust covers right wrong they are not well they are but they're not this entire thing is ip67 rated it is dust proof and waterproof as is with the caps off so you would be wondering we're all off Wh why what what for well <laughs> if you're like me and you're always doing something in your garage and you should drop this for whatever reason, face down on itself, you just kind of want to protect the pins. You don't want spiders building a nest in there. You don't want to drop it on something uneven. I mean, for some reason, I'm wheeling it around my backyard. 
I don't want to I don't want to break a little pin off in there because uh, nobody wants that so these aside from everybody thinking that they would just be dust covers they actually pretty much just protect the pins in there good idea to use them though I am a, a big fan of these and uh, I wish that everybody would send them out with them not needed but it's a great little touch so pin protection waterproof dust proof even with these caps off and then moving up to the front kind of the same thing I showed you this in the previous unboxing video uh, it's all dust proof and waterproof you just get that cool little cap to protect the pins from droppage now you are much more likely to drop this than you are say one of those uh, heads you know and then your worst problem is gonna be maybe you busted a lock or something but uh, most people I know they don't just walk around swinging this thing around use your dust covers that's what it's there for and speaking of that you'll notice that this thing is got some white schmutz all over it that's from the uh, wallboard dust when we were uh, putting in the 240 I had the covers on because who wants dust all caught up in there yeah it's good to go but this was also exposed so use your covers when you're not using uh, whichever uh, different charging head you're using they're there they came with it it's a great idea so uh, you charge in the rain anyway cars can do it IP67 rating big deal well not all rain comes straight down. If the wind is blowing, you have sideways wind. And having a product that is IP67 rated, like legitimately rated, signed off by the UL as rated, is fantastic. Water is going to seep to the lowest point. So when you're plugged in and you're dripping down, you know, if you're at a campground with your 1450 here, water can go anywhere and everywhere, as does dust. My window sills are a perfect example, and I sit under a pretty okay patio here. I get water and dust in all the time. I don't even know how it gets there. The rating is important. So even in the rain and the dust and the dirt, you know that you're going to have a EVSE that just works. Switzerland has horrible winters. I'm sure I've seen pictures, which makes me an expert in weather. <laughs> this is designed there. They know what they're doing when it comes to, uh, to bad weather uh, development of electrical systems, of charging components. And to get a, U, a UL rating on top of that, you just can't top that. So now, why else is this cool? Other than for every reason I've already stated, that should just be, you know, a giveaway right there, is how the each of the different heads actually locks into the unit and i'm going to show you that here in just a Come on second in here with the camera real fast so the other thing i wanted to show was how simple all this stuff is to connect so you have your regular j1772 and here this is the adapter you get when you get a tesla and all you want to do is just butter butter smooth you can see you've got a good lock on it pull down and this thing is absolutely as smooth as silk pretty even a good color match too that was bad english so that's it for the j1772n and then like i said when you're all done put your cap on just like that all right and finally on the actual charging unit itself come on in here you can see that there's a red dot right there and then on each of the different charging heads you can see that there's another red dot on them so what you'll wind up doing because you won't have a choice line them up and if you listen you can hear that sleeve lock and that is absolutely on there and you'll see one of the red lock one of the red dots disappear and that's it you'll just pull just pull straight out and you will get a good lock this is key weighed you can only put this on one way and you get a fan fantastic positive lock on that and the same thing with the other one again red dot to the red dot snap and you can actually hear that spring come back down and compress that and when i say it's got zero issues uh plugging those different charging heads in i mean it it is smooth as silk going in there whatever tooling that they use to make these the machine equipment that they're using to actually produce and replicate these things man those tolerances are just the best so the last thing that we'll do in the video guys we'll actually get this back out into the garage the kia is here the tesla is here i would like to show you how smooth the operation is of actually 
plugging in and charging your car. We sort of saw that with the Tesla in the last video, but this time it's a little more important because I want to make sure that uh, you guys just see how simple and elegant uh, each of these ends can plug into the vehicle. The machine work and the tooling is fantastic. So I'm going to move all this back into the garage. Sit okay, here we go. We'll start with the Kia and uh, let me show you a quick, um, well, Tesla Tim fix. Hang on. Sometimes the simplest answer is the easiest answer. There's your cable management. Just borrowed a hook from one of my race planes that used to be over here multi-purposed it right over here and now we have perfect cable management all right so you can see that we are sitting on the full 40 amps we are ready to go so let's just go ahead and unspool all of this and uh, one thing i absolutely hate about this kia is it is always locked no matter where you are you can't set it to not be locked at home or anything a big old like a speed brake so there's your j1772 in with the dc pins on there here is the juice america oh come on now uh, this particular car will let you know that charging has started and immediately pulling 9.3 kilowatts to charge with well, I tell you what even with the uh, charger that I was using prior to the juice America's charger on this it would still take a second to like ramp up that thing did it immediately to 9.3 kilowatts so uh, yeah color me impressed I, <laughs> that was pretty cool <laughs> so that was extremely smooth. Let's see how it does with the uh, unlatch and removal. Hang on. All right, so we're gonna assume that she's done testing or charging. Oh yeah, another stupid thing with this car is you have to unlock it when you wanna do the, remove this. <sighs> Just smooth. And to close the door on here, since we'll do a quick Kia review, boop. Absolutely color me impressed. Uh, that, this is probably one of the smoothest uh, J1772 ends I have ever used. So uh, whoever was running the uh, tooling line, <laughs> you did a great job that day. So yeah, good job on uh, Juice America. Your tooling is fantastic. So what happens, you get your car, you get it home, you got your Juice America J Plus Booster 2, Hey man, I don't have a 1450 installed in my house yet. That's okay, you can still use it because there's links at the bottom to buy the different heads that you may need. But the more common approach is just plug that sucker into your, whoops, into your 115 volts. And we're gonna go ahead and just do that right meow. Plugged in. And it immediately recognizes 12 amps is the max that we can do. So let's go ahead and come on over here. Wakey, wakey, Tesla. That should go green. Okay, that was immediate. So yeah, that shows that we're getting power to it. This is charged, but it st should still show at least two volts going to the vehicle, and it does. So we have two volts, and the car agrees that uh, we should be at 12 amps. It's just nice when everything works the way that it should. And with this, particular charger with Juice America, they get it. They've manufactured and designed a home charging unit that can be used on a regular wall outlet, a camping outlet, a 50 amp, 30 amp. There's a whole slew of different charging heads that you can use on here and it all just works. And at the end of the day, I call it plug and play because that's all you want to do. You want to plug it in, you want to go play, you want to forget about it. This company gets it, it's dialed in. Whatever the service equipment says, you clearly saw that the car agrees with it. You're not gonna go wrong with this. It's a little more on the pricey side for what you're going to pay somewhere else, but you're gonna get that back with the UL rating. You're gonna get that back with the dual temperature sensors in each of the charging heads for safety. And I'm telling you, it is a fantastic home charger 
portable charger. You're not going to regret it. So if you guys have any questions, if you want to see anything else, definitely uh, drop a comment. Not this weekend, but I believe the following. We're going to get up to one of the campgrounds. It's summertime here, so they're rented out like forever, but I only need about an hour's worth because I would like to show you guys uh, how this would look in an actual outside setting at a camp where you may not get your full, you know, 40 amps out there. So I think that's important to know as well. So we're going to get that one fired up next. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, Juice America. Thanks again, guys, for sending this out to the channel. You guys are awesome. And your quality of product is just from a consumer point of view. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next one.